So probably the most requested video I get from all of you guys is something about banking apps. You want to know what banks offer what on your phone. Because let's face it, most of the time now we're doing most of our transactions on our smartphone. Very, very rare that I personally actually log in to my desktop to the online banking. Even rarer that I'll phone the bank. Even rarer still that I'll go into a bank branch. The app is kind of where it's at for so many of us. So you want to make sure that the bank you're with is doing the things that you want it to do just in the palm of your hand. Now I've got, I think it's 15 different current accounts right now. Not necessarily 15 different banks, but 15 different current accounts, probably about across about a dozen different banks or so. So I've got access to, and I've used a lot of them. The reason I've held off doing that video is because it's a lot of work. But what I've done is I found a kind of a way that I can hopefully share with you rather than going into every single app step by step, which let's face it, would make this like an hour long video. I could probably do <laughs> probably even longer than that. I could probably do 10, 15 minutes on each app if I work like that. Instead, I've looked at them all, got a table that I'll share with you, and I've worked out which ones have which features and which ones don't have certain features. So we can have a look at that, and then I'll take those key ones, the most important ones, things like can you see your PIN? Can you make up a, set up a new payee in the app? You don't have to go to your desktop or get a card reader. Can you uh, pay in a check? All these different things, different features that you've got, I will go through them to let you know who does what. So my name is Andy Webb. Welcome to the channel if you are new. If you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button and that little notification bell next to it so you will get updates on all the videos every time I release them. Loads of content here on all sorts of personal finance, but particularly around bank savings and credit cards. So let me show you this, this table that I've created. This is kind of my way around of not having to kind of go into every app and also have to show you all the details, you know, potentially to block out my account numbers and all that kind of stuff, plus also deal with the ones that I don't have. Here is this epic table that I've done. And these are the banks that I've looked at. I've gone for the main high street ones and the main challenger ones, the main sort of fintech digital banks. We've got Barclays, First Direct, Halifax, HSBC, Lloyds, Monzo, and here I'm focusing on the free account with Monzo, so the benefits in the app you get with the free version. Nationwide, NatWest, Revolut, Santander, Starling, TSB, and finally Virgin Money. So they're the banks that I've looked at. And then I've also looked at certain sections. So we have got at the top savings features. Then we've got banking features, that kind of the day-to-day -day stuff that you would do for your banking. Really important for a digital bank, yeah, for a banking app. Then we've got budgeting features. So things you can do to help you track your spending and know your spending. Uh, and then we've also got finally a few management things as well. The stuff that kind of makes it a lot easier for you doing the day-to-day -day stuff with your current account. So that's what we've got. They're the different banks, they're the different sections. And just very quickly, just, just use this as a kind of a visual. The green is an indication, right, that it has the feature. The red is an indication that it doesn't have the feature. You'll notice there are a couple of different blanks here and there. Uh, that's possibly because two of the apps, HSBC, and Santander, I don't currently have this. So the information I've got from that, I've garnered from their websites and forums and sort of done lots of research and tried to find the bits and pieces. But there's a few things, a little bit missed out. And there's a couple of also gaps there where I've got the app, I've got the bank account, but I haven't had it long enough to really kind of check that it can offer this. Sometimes this is stuff that you need a few more transactions in place and that information isn't online. But broadly, we're still going to get a good sense from this of what works and what doesn't and which ones you can go for. Now, Savings, as you can see from the top here, there's a lot of red. There are lots of red things there, not much green. Now, this is something that's actually relatively new to the banking space, the banking app space. And you wouldn't be surprised to find the ones that are offering this generally, although not exclusively, are some of those new challenger banks. So we can see Monzo, Revolut, Starling, and Virgin Money to an extent have these features. So what are these? What are savings pots? Why are they important to an app? Well, essentially, it's a really clever little thing where you can have your money, the money that's in your current account, it can sit there in your current account just as it would in the normal uh, balance. You know, it's just there. Let's say you've got a thousand pounds in your account, you've got a thousand pounds in your account. With POTS, and I'm using POTS here, that tells the terminology that is used by Monzo, but essentially it works for all the others as well. Starling has spaces, Revolut has vaults. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the terminology is in some of the others, but what they let you do is move off. You can break down, almost put up a little barrier up and partition your money into separate sections. Now, some of them allow loads of these. Some of them only allow one or two. Some of them have a limit of how much you can put in them, but they are a nice little kind of savings feature helping you go, right, if I'm going to save for something, put money aside, it's going to go into that. Let me go back full screen here. It's going to go into 
that savings space, that savings pot, that savings vault. That's good for a couple of reasons. One, you can track it. You can set a goal. You know what you're going for. You can rename them a lot of the time and you can see that I'm going to save towards this thing, the holiday, the car, the mortgage. And that's kind of been proven to kind of, if you've got that kind of thing you're actively saving for rather than just savings, you're going to save more money. You're going to put more money into it. So that's fantastic. Uh, you can also keep it separate from your main account. So you're not going to be tempted to spend from it. Yes, you can just transfer the money into your back into your account, but that's a nice little savings feature. Now, I think this is great. I think this is lovely. And I think if you're someone who needs that help, then one of those accounts are really important ones to go for. But what I would say is you can kind of achieve that uh, in other ways. There are third party apps that will let you do this and kind of set up separate things. I've talked about Plum here on the on the YouTube channel, places like uh, Chip, Yolt, all these places will kind of have that kind of function. Doesn't quite work in the same way, but you can't, don't have to change your bank just to get that. Also, if you want to, you could just have a separate account. And although it might not have that option to sort of rename it, you can move the money over just by using a standing order. And we'll get to standing orders in a minute. So it just moves it over. You can click it over. So rather, okay, in the app, you say, tr click it over here. So an extra two clicks, extra three clicks, an extra 30 seconds, you can move it somewhere else. So it's a great feature. I love it. I think it's really good things that Monzo and Starling and Revolut and places are doing with this, but it's not massively vital. Uh, and then on there, say so the only ones that are offering these pots right now, Monzo, Revolut, Starling, TSB, if you have the spend and save account, TSB has this, and Virgin Money. But Virgin Money works slightly differently, but it's within a separate savings account, but it's essentially the same thing. Now let's get back onto that spreadsheet and let's look at the other savings feature, auto savings. Now again, a lot of red here and it's roughly the same banks which are offering this kind of feature. Monzo, this is the best one absolutely app-wise for auto savings. Not only can you do some things within the app, you can also connect it to something called If This Then That, uh, which is brilliant. I really love this. There's a whole video on this back in January, I think it was. And you can gamify essentially your savings. So within the app, when certain things happen, when it rains outside, when you go to a certain place, that could be maybe a you know time you go to the pub, you want to penalize yourself and move money from your account into your savings. Monzo is the best one for that. Nationwide has something very simple, which is basically just topping up your change, which is something that Monzo has as well. So every time you spend money, uh, let's say you spend one pound eighty, twenty p will be the top up to get it to two quid. They'll move that from your current account into a separate savings pot. Uh, Revolut has that function. Starling has that function. TSB uh, has that function. So again, not a great one, but if you're thinking about savings, if that's a really important thing for your app, Monzo certainly wins undoubtedly. Right. Let's move on to something which I think is kind of probably more important now, and that is just your banking, the general day-to-day -day banking. All of them make it very easy to make a transfer within the app. So you want to transfer money to someone else, you can do that. Where it becomes slightly different is when you make a, a new payee. Now, this is one of the big frustrations I have with Nationwide. Uh, Nationwide sees a big red mark there. No, you can't set up a new payee in the app. I'm really, really frustrated by that because I really like Nationwide as a, as a bank, but you can't do that. Uh, but all the others, pretty much, they let you do it. They have some kind of extra authentication. So maybe it's your thumbprint, maybe it's your password, but they all let you set up a new payee in the app. The only one which might possibly be an issue is Barclays here at the beginning. You need your debit card. The debit card needs to be available to set up a new payee. But if you're a regular Barclays customer, you've probably got your debit card on you. But again, not fantastic. When it comes to creating a standing order, so if you want to set up a regular payment, again, a lot of the banks do this. The ones that don't, that's probably the easiest thing here. You can't set up a new standing order in the app with First Direct, HSBC, and Nationwide. The rest will let you do that. So that's a really easy thing to do. So you can do the bulk of this kind of banking, transferring money to people, setting up a standing order, changing a standing order, canceling a direct debit. You can do all those things in the app. You don't have to go online, apart from, say, those banks, HSBC, Nationwide, first direct now this last one here or not last one this next one here paying in a check is something which i kind of thought was well why would anyone need that nowadays until 12 months ago when lockdown began and i started doing some shopping for my elderly neighbors who gave me uh the, I, the money in a check form so i would do the shopping pay for it and they would pay me back with a check and suddenly i found that actually i didn't want to go to a branch how do i do it but luckily i had a number of current accounts that would let me do this and i would say that you put on the edge most of them will let you do it. So if you want to pay in a check, you can do that with Barclays. You can do that with First Direct. You can do that with Halifax, HSBC, Lloyd's, big gap there, and then Starling and Virgin Money.
Okay, so if that's something you think it's important, that's worth thinking about, or at least having a account that will let you do that. It doesn't have to do it in all your accounts, but you could always have one which you pay the money in a check and transfer it over. Now this last one here, actually, the last one on that banking section is something I've called uh, share account details. And now this is something which I think is kind of, it's such a small thing, but it makes life so much easier. If you're on your phone, and you've got to either give your account details to someone to pay you, or maybe you're signing up for something and you need to enter those details, whatever it might be. These are the accounts where you can either just, uh, some of them will let you just highlight it and copy it, which is the best. Others will let you kind of share it, which means you can move it into a text message or a WhatsApp message or into an email or into a note. And then you can obviously go in if you want to and highlight and copy it, which is a slightly extra step. Now, more banks do this than I realized. So it really has been interesting going through all these accounts, all these different apps, just see exactly what they're all doing. But the ones that will let you uh, at least share the account details and then go and copy them or copy them completely are Barclays, Halifax. Got a blank there for HSBC. Sorry about that. If you have an HSBC account, you know if you can do this, let me know in the comments below, right? So people will be aware of that one. Lloyds, Monzo, NatWest, Revolut, Santander, Starling, TSB and Virgin Money. So the only ones that won't let you do this are First Direct and Nationwide. That's it. So hopefully that's a feature. If you haven't seen it, sometimes you have to delve in a little bit to find it and it's not always the most obvious place, but you can do that. No more this kind of, you know, when you've got an app open and you're trying to kind of, right, open up, close that one, open another app to get that thing. You've got to remember that number, go back into that app for the account number. And sometimes it's logged you out. So then you've got to log back in to go in and get the sort code. And you don't have to worry about that. You can just copy them, which is which is fantastic. So let's move on from banking to budgeting. And again, this is one of those things which has become uh, more and more prevalent now across the different banking apps. We see this used to be just in those challenger banks in Monzo and Starling, but as you can see, there's a fair bit of green here. They are starting to do more of this. Um, the first one is in terms of analyzing your spending. So it was all your transactions that come through. And it will say, right, you are spending on these particular retailers or maybe on these particular types of retailer or types of purchase. And it helps you kind of kind of get that picture, that kind of broader sort of sense of where your money is going. I think it's a really useful thing to have. Who does this? Well, yes, Barclays has something that lets you do it. First Direct doesn't. Halifax has a limited one. HSBC doesn't. Lloyd has a limited one. Monzo's is pretty good. Monzo's is probably one of the best one. Nationwide, surprise, it doesn't do it. NatWest has something again, Revolut has this, Santander's is quite limited, Starling has this, uh, and Virgin Money has this, TSB doesn't. So that's great, but what I would say is, this is something which they all have their pros and cons, but personally, and I will do a video on this later on, there are third party apps like Yolt, like Money Dashboard, that do this much, much, much better. And you can do it across, not just your current accounts that you're linking, but your credit cards as well. And if you're someone like me who does all their spending on a cashback credit card, then this is pretty pointless because the only payments that come out of my current account are payments to the credit card other than the odd one here or there on my bills. So yes, I think it's great that these banks offer them, but I wouldn't make it one of my reasons to get a particular banking app. I would look at those third party ones instead and use open banking to connect. I promise you, I will do a video on these very, very soon. Now the next one here is in terms of similar kind of thing, setting a budget. I'll quickly go through those. You can set a budget, let's go to the top. We're very, very few of them. Monzo lets you set a budget, NatWest lets you set a budget, Revolut lets you do it, Starling lets you do it, and Virgin Money lets you do it. They all work in different ways, but essentially you say that I've got this much to spend this month on these different categories, and it can help you. But again, I think you're better off with the third parties, which makes this next one, which kind of distorts a lot of kind of the, the red and the, the green here. This is about open banking, what I said, where you can connect other accounts to your main app. So rather than going in and out of different apps, you can potentially just look at all of them within the, uh, the, the particular bank you're with. Now, half of them roughly will let you connect to open banking, probably just under half of them. And I've got a list here of the different banks. You can see the ones they do connect to. So small number for Barclays, same amount for Halifax and Lloyds, because essentially they're the same app and same bank, uh, and a much bigger list for NatWest and Revolut. Um, Monzo does offer this, but only in the paid version of the account. So I've not included that. But again, this is another one where I think go for one of the open banking apps, which is designed, which is all about doing this and giving you the access. But it's good to know it's there, right? If you I don't want to worry about that. Now, this next one is one of the best things that Monzo and Starling have done. This is about instant notifications. If you haven't already had a bank that offers this, 
then you are in for a treat because if you turn this on, you will be told you hit your debit card on the terminal, wherever you are, you make that payment straight away up on your phone, it pops up and it says you have spent such and such in XYZ, wherever it is. Now, I really, really like this feature and I think it's something which, uh, you know, is so, so handy for budgeting, but also for security. So not only, let's say you're in a bar or something, it's really busy and you just tap and go and you haven't, it's not like a normal point of sale where you're at the till and you see how much it is and someone says that'll be such and such. And you get the receipt and you can check it. You're in a bar, you tap, you get straight away your phone and say that you've just paid this much. So you know whether there's been a mistake if you've been overcharged or you can get a sense of, again, of the cumulative cost of these things adding together. Where it's also great is in fraud. So let's say your card is stolen. If this doesn't have this notice, so as soon as someone uses that card, that stolen card, it pops up on your phone. And if you haven't made that purchase, you know something's dodgy, you can go in and, well, I'll go on to a minute what you can do in a minute with some of these other features. So this is a really good thing. More and more banks are doing this now. Okay, this again started off. A lot of these features started with Starling and Monzo, but so many of them do them now. And let's have a look. Who is offering the opportunity to uh, instant notifications? So let's go to the top. Barclays, yes. First Direct, no. Halifax, yes. HSBC, I read, is rolling this out very soon. So by the time you watch this, that might already be one of their features. Lloyd's, yes. Monzo, yes. Nationwide, no surprise there. No. NatWest, yes. Revolut, yes. Santander, again, this is one of those gaps that I can't find the information because I don't have it. Let us know below if that gives you instant notifications with a debit card spend. Uh, Starling, yes. TSB, no. Virgin Money, yes. So that is absolutely, this is probably the first one we've got to where I think this is an essential for your banking app. If your banking app does not offer this for your regular transactions, your regular spending, instant notifications, then I would consider moving across. So that would be ditching, TSB, Nationwide, or first direct. Now, some other budgeting features here, which are quite good. You can see upcoming regular payments or whether you can see pending payments. So upcoming regular payment, this is essentially the ones that you're doing every single month. And it's just a nice little thing that you know, right, hang on, these are coming up in the next two weeks. So actually, if I've got this much in my account, I need to make sure I don't spend more than what's over here. They work in different ways. Some of them are better than others. Some of them will actually uh, show you the money you've got. They will calculate it for you in a different tab which is great. Uh, the pending payments is more where actually it can take a few days, sometimes up to four working days, if not more, for payments that you've made to actually come through and appear uh, in the balance. So the balance might not reflect money you've actually spent, which is really frustrating. Not all banks do this, but some of them do. But they want to show you the pending payments is really key because at least you can see then, and often it's at the top, but it's sort of this, you know, you've got £100 due over here at some point. It's not come through yet, but at least you're aware of that. Now, uh, Barclays, uh, again, calendar view they've got for this in terms of the upcoming regular payments you can click on that you can see when they are first direct offers both of them halifax offers both of them uh, hsbc's got a feature called balance after bills for those upcoming regular payments and you can see the pending payments in fact the ones that don't do it again nationwide doesn't do either of those natwest doesn't i couldn't see at least that kind of upcoming regular payments and tsb also i couldn't find upcoming regular payments in there now doesn't mean it's not there, but I have been into those apps. I've gone through all of them. I've read loads about ones, even the ones I've got. So if I haven't, can't find it, it means it's probably not there. Uh, go back in time kind of thing. This idea of when you're looking at the transactions, one of the things I find really, really, really frustrating is the sense that, uh, you know, you're trying to sort of think, when did I buy that? Or how much did I spend on that? And you go back and it's like, oh, it only goes back a few months or a year or whatever it is. So I've had a look and I've got here... Uh, rough idea if i've got an account that's old enough to go back i've gone back a certain amount uh, or i've researched online so again a few gaps but again i think this is, if you find this useful this is good information can you go back more than one year barclays at least three years first direct only six months which i think is quite frustrating halifax more than three years again hsbc i couldn't get that information so do let me know lloyd's more than three years uh monzo again this is because it's a digital app you can go back to all your transactions you can keep going back it's all on there nationwide it's 15 months nat west you can go back revolut again this is one because i've got the app but i've never actually used it i can't see how far back you can go but i would imagine because let me get the table back up here sorry because uh revolut is digital only you're going to be able to go back and see everything santander i don't know but starling tsb you can go back a long way as well. And Virgin Money, again, this is a new account, the Virgin Money, but it was based on the B account. So if someone's had it before, they may be able to sort of comment below and let us know just how far back you can go in. I've also got some other things here in terms of that kind of side of things in filtering your search. I find it really frustrating if I'm trying to find a particular transaction that I can't search for it or I can't filter in and out or I can't do all these bits and pieces. The ones that won't let you do that filter the money in and out. 
TSB, Starling, Nationwide, Lloyds, Halifax. So they're my ones to potentially avoid. Now, in terms of downloading statements, you can do that also now with most of the banks. They pretty much all offer a PDF. Some of them will offer you extra features. So Starling and Revolut and Monzo will also let you do it. Export it, so you can put it into an Excel sheet if you wanted, or if you have accounting software, upload it to there. Nationwide and TSB do not let you download statements on the app that I could find. It's important to say, obviously, with all of this stuff, the banks, they will be updating and changing these things all the time. They're going to be constantly making these improvements. So we might find that these changes are addressed either in small incremental ad additions and changes or maybe wholesale kind of like here's a whole new thing that we're doing. Now, there's one last feature that I want to talk about in this section in terms of budgeting, and it's only available on Monzo, Revolut and Starling. They're the only ones that do this, although, like I said, the other banks will probably copy and add it on at some point. But this is the ability to make additional notes and add photos to transactions. So potentially you're out, you buy something, you get the receipt, you don't want to carry the paper around with you, you get your phone out, you open up the app, you find the transaction, which is instantaneous with those ones. You take a photo of the receipt and it is constantly is there, permanently there. If you want to write a little note next to it, say exactly what it was, you can. So I think those things are all fantastic. Right, let's move on now to the last big section here. And this is in terms of the management of your account. And the things here, the ones that I've kind of put in here for us to really focus on, um, something called freezing the card. And pretty much every single one, apart from TSB and Virgin Money, let you do this. This was something that just, again, you got with those innovative uh, challenger banks, but now pretty much most of them will let you freeze the card. This is where, let's say your card is lost. You don't know where it is. You can quickly go in, hit freeze. If you then find it, you can unfreeze it and start using it. No problem at all. If it's lost, well, then you can cancel it. All the apps will let you go in and essentially say you've reported your lock card has been stolen and get all a new one. Uh, but this is, I think, the, the fantastic feature. So again, who do you want to avoid? Who doesn't let you do this? TSB and Virgin Money. If that's important to you, you don't want those apps. Now, I think this is a next one is brilliant. Again, more banks are doing this, but the ability to see the PIN. Now, okay, probably you know your PIN, right? And if you've got a different card, you may well, you shouldn't do this, but you probably change that PIN so it's the same PIN on other cards. So you only need to remember that one. But if you are having multiple pins on different cards, then the ability just to go in and check it on the app, I think is fantastic. Now, the ones where you can do, you can do this, right? You can check your pin. You can just, you know, thumbprint, face print, password, whatever it is to see your pin. Barclays, Halifax, Lloyds, Monzo, Revolut, Santander, and Starling. So that, again, really, really useful. I'm sure there's been times, particularly we have that bit of brain freeze, maybe particularly after the last year, if you've not been out shopping as much and spending money, you might think, oh, hang on, what is it? Open up your, pick, your app and you can see it. So they're really good ones to, to think about. Now, seeing your card number is something new that not many do this. In fact, this is something that only that Starling, Revolut and Monzo will let you do. Okay, let's move on now to a feature which I love, which again, only on Starling, Monzo and Revolut. This is why so many people, including myself, rave about these fintech apps because they are doing more than the others. The others are catching up, but this is a feature only on those. And this is the ability to see your card number. Really, really handy for digital shopping or you know, well, essentially just online shopping because you need the actual card if you're shopping elsewhere. Open up the app, security, you get the long number, you get the three digits on the back, you get the expiry date, you can make a purchase without actually having your card on you. So that's a really great innovation, but just with those ones. As I said, they all let you order a new card via the app. So you can do that on every single one of them. And they pretty much all have gambling blocks now. Only Nationwide, TSB and Virgin didn't have a gambling block that I could see. In terms of further restrictions, this is where you can go into the app and say, look, I don't want you to be able to use it contactlessly. I don't want you to be able to use it overseas. You can do all these different sort of minutia blocks with some accounts. That's kind of hit and miss. The ones which do have some of these additional restrictions are Barclays, Halifax, Lloyds, NatWest, Santander, Starling. So again, if you want a bit more control, those banks will all let you do that. Again, I don't have the information there uh, about HSBC, whether they will give you those extra controls. Now, the last one to show you over on the spreadsheet is biometric login. This is this sort of idea that you can use your thumbprint, you can use your face ID, whatever it is to quickly log in, sometimes also to authorize uh, transactions and things like that within there. It's like a speed thing, it's a convenience thing. And you see lots of green here, 
lots and lots of green, one red. First direct was the only one which didn't allow this to log in. You had to go through a kind of convoluted standard login process. If this is important to you, don't go for first direct. Now, the last thing to tell you about, there's a couple of features, extra features, which I've not covered here. Some of them are nice to have. They're not necessarily essential, but if you've got these banks, you might want to use them. Uh, particularly the idea of splitting the bill or paying friends instantly. Monzo and Starling will let you do those kind of things. Revolut as well. They all work in different ways, but you might find it useful, particularly if your friends are with the same bank. In fact, Revolut has a thing that's called group bills where you can all kind of get together within the app and share that. Again, potentially nice to have, but I wouldn't move to a bank just for these things. There are a couple of additional features though that a couple of banks have on their apps, which I think are worth shouting out at the end. One of them is NatWest. NatWest has a function where if you don't have your debit card, but you do have your phone, you can get cash out of one of their ATMs. So you can go into it, get a QR code, and I think it gives you up to like 140 quid, something like that. Scan it at the NatWest or RBS, I think maybe Tesco Bank as well, cash machines, and it will give you that money. So it's a nice handy feature if you're someone who's prone to leaving there or losing their debit cards and you're worried about that, could be worth considering. Uh, and Revolut also has for free included with the basic standard accounts, something called virtual cards. Now we will see more of these going on. Monzo has got them, which they try and push it in its kind of paid for accounts. Uh, Moneys, which I've not gone into detail here, but Moneys does offer this as well. But Revolut will give you a number of virtual debit cards and disposable virtual debit cards. And this basically means, yes, you can get an actual normal plastic one if you want, but you can just get one. If you're not worried about making purchases out and about, you've got that card and you can have multiple ones. Quite handy potentially for online spending, extra cards. So you can have them. If something goes wrong, you just stop using them. And in fact, those disposable ones are great for that reason. They expire after a certain amount of time. So if you're ever worried about using a website, which might you think, oh, I'm not sure about putting my details in there, what a disposable virtual debit card will get around that quite easily because they can't spend anything after a certain date and they can't use it anywhere else. So there you go. Okay, I told you there's a lot of information. I told you if I'd gone through app by app and shown you all, it would have taken a long, long time, wouldn't I? So what ones do I think are best based on this kind of research on these tables? Well, I was quite surprised to say that both Barclays and Halifax had a lot of those extra features on, those essential features and some extra things which I thought were, were pretty good. I was surprised. They have made some changes. The user experience is pretty good as well. So they're well worth considering as decent ones for your banking if you want one of those big high street names. But again, Starling and Monzo have a lot of those extra features and just make it a lot easier. And I'm sure they're gonna be innovating extra things already to go in on top. If you're after the budgeting stuff in particular, again, I mentioned those third-party apps are pretty good for that, but Monzo probably has the edge, particularly when it comes to savings, that if this, then that I told you about, I think is fantastic. So that's worth looking at with Monzo as well. And Revolut, the virtual cards, I'm not a huge fan of Revolut, I should say, but it does have isn't that, that virtual card thing, disposable virtual cards, which might be interesting, so you might wanna consider having that as a, a backup account for those purposes. The ones to avoid, well, sadly, Nationwide, as much as I love it as a building society, it's not a bank, it's a building society, as much as I love it, the app is awful. They've got to make some changes. If they do make some changes and they make good changes and they can compete with everybody else, then I think that's possibly going to be right up there. At the moment, you still need a card reader to make uh, new transactions and it doesn't have all these extras. So Nationwide is not a great one at all. And First Direct as well, that fails. Oh, look, it gets a good reputation as a bank for customer service, a good reputation for the app. But the fact that you can't get those instant notifications, the fact that you can't uh, get use your face ID, again, now in the modern age, this is kind of feeling a bit antiquated. It needs to kind of step up and, and catch up with people. Plus, you can only go back six months in transactions. First Direct is still very much an online browser-based bank, I think. It's not an app-based bank. The rest... They're kind of here or there. They're kind of, you've got them, they're okay, but they're certainly not the reason to have that bank account. Now, as I've said a few times, these things can change and they will change. They are always innovating. They're always trying to improve. This is where banking is right now. They want to give you a good app experience because they know so much of the banking takes place on our phone. So what I'll do, any updates that I hear about, anything that's really fantastic, anything new, anything bad as well, because things obviously could be make change for the worse, I will now start including anything substantial in my monthly bank account roundups. If you wanna watch those, it takes you through all the different features, the different promotions, bank switching, things like that. Then I've got a playlist up here. Click on that 
and it will take you to the most recent video. Now, if you found this video useful, please do hit that like button. Leave me a comment. Let me know who you bank with, which bank apps you like. Fill in any of those gaps that I mentioned before with Santander and HSBC for everyone watching. That would be really useful as well. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. My name's Andy Webb. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, cheers. And here are a couple more videos you might find interesting.